My name is Lucy. And this is my school. One of my favourite lessons is writing workshop. Mrs Nicholson is our class teacher. Sometimes she reads us stories. Today she wants us to write one of our own. Our group is going to write stories about animals. First we talk about all kinds of animals. Then we each pick one to write about. Everyone else seems to have an idea for a story. I like animals and I want my stories to be really good, but I'm not sure how to begin. I wonder how writers get ideas for their books. Dear Dick King Smith, I like the stories you write. I've read The Sheep Pig, Saddlebottom and The Foxbusters. Tumbleweed made me laugh and I like The Queen's Nose. Our teacher wants us to write a story about an animal. I like writing stories but I can't make up my mind how to start. Lots of your stories are about animals. How do you get your ideas? Do you find it easy to write stories? And is it fun being a writer? Please tell me about yourself and how you write your books. Did you want to be a writer when you were at school? You must be very busy, but it would be great if you could give me a few bits of advice. Thank you very much. Love from Lucy. Dear Lucy, Thank you very much for your letter. I did enjoy reading it, and I'm glad you like my stories, which, as you say, are usually about animals. I understand you've got to write a story about an animal, and you're a bit worried about how to start. You ask me how I start, and I think probably the best advice I can give is to write about an animal that you know, perhaps even one you've got. You ask me if I always wanted to be a writer, and the answer is no. I always wanted to be a farmer, which is what I was for a long time. But I always liked words and writing verse and stuff like that, and eventually, when I was in my middle fifties, I had an idea for a story which turned out to be my first book, The Fox Busters. And I was lucky enough to get that published when I was fifty-six years old. Of course, the advantage that I got over you, Lucy, is that because I've lived for quite a long time, I suppose, I've experienced things, had things happen to me that you haven't had time to happen yet. Um, and one of those, of course, was being a farmer for 20 years. And that helped me a lot with some of my stories because I, I knew what I was writing about and I remembered certain animals that I used to have and some of the animals in the stories are based on those animals. Some of the animals on the stories in the stories are based on people. Um, one of my grandsons, for instance, is actually Magnus Power Mouse. It's a long story and I won't go into it now, but he was at one time a very angry, bad-tempered little boy, and Magnus Power Mouse is a very angry, bad-tempered little mouse. I was a soldier in the last war, so if I write stories like Saddlebottom, for example, which is all about a pig in the army, that helps me. And after that, of course, I was a teacher for quite a long time. And so I met lots of children, which helped me in writing about children. And I've got three children of my own. They're all grown up, of course, but I've got ten grandchildren. So I'm really pretty well equipped for writing stories about children and animals. But don't be worried by the fact that you aren't that well equipped. You've still got a brain, you've still got an imagination, you've still got a hand, you've still got a pen. Get on and write your story. 
You've got to write your story in your classroom. I write usually in my study. It's a little tiny study. And I go in there and I shut myself in about 10 o'clock in the morning. And I stay there for a couple of hours and I write on rough paper with a felt pen awful dreadful squiggles that nobody except me can possibly read with all kinds of crossings out and circles and special signs that mean something to me but nobody else. And then in the afternoon I come back and I get the typewriter out, clean bit of paper, and with that finger, it's a very, very strong finger that actually does all the work, I type out what I did in the morning. So by the end of the afternoon, the story's gone forward, perhaps only a page if I've had a a bad day and have been able to think of things, or perhaps six pages have had a good day, or perhaps a whole chapter even. And if that happens, then in the evening, I read that chapter to my wife, because she knows when I'm writing well and when I'm writing badly. Philip the First. Of all the countries in the world, Felicia was the best place to live. To begin with, there was a bank holiday each week on Mondays, and anyway, no one ever did any work on a day that had an S in it, which is just left Fridays. Next, it only ever rained at night, and then only just... Because when you write your story, Lucy, about an animal, you may decide to pick one perhaps you own, like a dog or a cat or, or a pet rabbit. I've got all sorts of animals to choose from, most of them in my head, and some of them in my house. Here's my old dodo, who used to appear with me on television programs like Rubber Dub Tub and later Tumble Down Farm. I write about all sorts of different animals. Very often it's farm animals and very often it's my favourite farm animal which is a pig. What people don't realise about pigs is first of all that they're very clean animals. People think that they're dirty because they like wallowing. If it's a very hot day they get in the mud and they get filthy dirty but they're very clean in their habits and they're very intelligent. The pigs, I think, are lovely. But they're so brainy, you know. If you look at a pig's eyes, next time you get near a pig, Lucy, you look into a pig's eye and you'll see somebody very like you looking back. I think they're rather beautiful. You might think it's funny that a pig should appear beautiful because it's a great fat, short legged big bottom sort of thing. They're beautiful to me and I love writing stories about them because of the sort of stories I write, you see. You can put words into the animals' mouths. You can make them speak. I, I'm, I'm very fond of the idea of courage and animals like Daggy Dogfoot, for instance, one of my books, who was a very, very small, crippled person and fighting against all sorts of terrible odds, but because he was brave and resolute, in the end he became a brave hero. And that sort of business of courage triumphing over the odds rather appeals to me. It might be a thing that you wanted to put into your story by the brave animal of some sort. Or you could make your story funny or sad or exciting or frightening. There's so many different things you can put into a story. All you've got to remember, whatever animal you choose to write about, and whatever story you choose to write, it's got to have a good beginning and a good middle and a good end. I have to find out quite a lot about some of the animals I write about. I mean, if I'm writing about a dog, that's okay, I know about dogs. So I wrote a story recently about an ostrich, and I had to go to a library and find out things I didn't know about ostriches. And I found out a very interesting thing about ostrich language. An ostrich really has four words that it uses. And they are boo, twoo, rump, and boom. And boo is, hello, how do you do? Boo, that's what an ostrich says when it meets you. If the ostrich likes you or likes another ostrich, it says twoo in a rather soft, sloppy sort of way. If it doesn't much like you and it's angry with you, it's liable to say Hup! And if it really dislikes you, it goes boom. Now, none of those things I knew about ostriches, but I know about them now, and I've stuck them in the book. And it was the same with a book of verses that I've written called Alpha Beast, which is an animal alphabet. And I didn't just put ordinary animals in, I put all sorts of really weird animals in, and I had to be careful that they did the things that they do and look like they look. Um, 
So I had to research it. I had to look it all up, go to libraries and look in picture books and encyclopedias and that sort of thing. I'll say a couple of them for you if you like, Lucy. Um, let's see. E. We'll, we'll start with E, not A. We'll start with E. E is about the elk. The American elk, also known as the Wapiti, runs through the maple woods clippity cloppity. Favoured with feet of remarkable property, Wapitis never have need of chiropity. And here's another one. W. The Tasmanian wombat is grizzly grey and lies in the sunshine the whole of the day. How nice to retire from the unequal combat and copy the floppy Tasmanian wombat. One of the things I like doing is writing stories about animals doing extraordinary things. And one of the extraordinary things about that is that sometimes after I've written the story, it happens. I wrote a story called Harry's Man. Well, there's a parrot called Madison who speaks the Queen's English beautifully. And I read an article the other day in an American newspaper about a parrot that actually has a vocabulary of 80 different words. You can understand 80 different words and speak them back. So in a way that was Madison coming true. And even stranger there, I wrote a story called The Sheep Pig about an orphan pig who was adopted by a collie dog and he liked herding sheep and he learned to herd sheep and he was very successful at herding sheep and he won the Grand Challenge Sheep Dog Trial. But about two years after I'd written that story, I read an article in the a South Wales newspaper, and indeed this was on the television at all as well, about a sheep farmer there who brought up a pet pig, and he used to take it out with him every morning, and the pig would rush about snorting and grunting and driving the sheep all over the shop. I don't suppose he did it very successfully like my sheep pig, but he was another sheep pig. One of the things I like best when I'm writing stories is trying to make them funny, trying to say something that will make people laugh. Both my grandparents, both my grandfathers, were terrible punsters. They, each of them spent all their lives making awful, awful puns. And of course, the, the worse a pun is, the better it is in a funny way. And so I use a lot of that because, you see, although you might think I'm writing books to amuse you, what I'm actually doing is writing books to amuse myself. So if I can put something down that makes me giggle, then hopefully it might give you a laugh too. When I was your age, Lucy, there wasn't any television. There was the radio, of course, but mostly there were books. I mean, when I think back to the books that I liked, again, when I was your age, I still like them, you see. I still think they're amongst the best books ever. I still love books by people like Beatrix Potter and A.A. Milne and Kenneth Graham's Wind in the Willows and Rudyard Kipling's Jungle Story, which I think is the best animal story ever written. I still like them, I still read them. And it's one of the greatest gifts that any human being could have is the ability to read books and enjoy them. If you were to ask me, do I have a favourite among the books I've written, I would say, oh Lucy, I wish you hadn't asked me that because it's such a difficult question to answer. It's very difficult to say, which is my favourite, but if you ask me which is my best, then I would have probably to say the sheep thing so far. I might do better, you never know. Thanks again for your letter, Lucy. I've tried to answer your questions as best I can, but of course I can't actually write the story for you. You've got to do it on your own. Um, don't worry too much because I find it quite difficult to start sometimes and very often I get stuck in the middle and very often I can't think how to end it. The only way is just to beaver away at it. Really sort of think and think and think. Ideas won't drop out of the sky. They've got to come out of that thing that's stuck on top of your neck. Anyway, I should be very interested to read your story, which I hope you to do, because I'm going to come and visit your school next month. So good luck with it. Yours sincerely, Dick Kingsmith. I was very pleased to hear from Dick King Smith and I was surprised that he was coming to our school. First he read to us from one of his stories, then each class could ask questions. I didn't need to ask him anything 
because he'd answered all my questions in his letter. Just as we were going, I took the chance to show him my animal story. I think he liked it. It'll be a long time before I've written as many stories as he has. But it's fun to try it, and I've got some ideas for more stories now. Whatever animal you choose to write about, whatever story you choose to write, it's going to have a good beginning, and a good middle, and a good end. Although you might think I'm writing books to amuse you, what I'm actually doing is writing books to amuse myself.